Hey, my name is Renee and we serve with Take the City in Murfreesboro in Tennessee. And I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about why unity is so important and what it looks like in our city, but in every city really, because we're part of a broken world that is reaching out for something um, that they just don't know what the answer is yet. And if we as a body of Christ work together, we get the opportunity to show them what that looks like by how we live in community with other believers in our own city. And so uh, Andrew talked about uh, John chapter 17 a little earlier in one of the previous videos. And I just wanna um, recapture that really quick. John 17, verse 23. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. We're really fortunate in the city of Murfreesboro. Um, there are about 15 youth pastors from different churches, different denominations that get together every month to just hang out with each other, see how everybody's life is going. Um, they do unity events together. They work together um, inside the public schools to share just the message of hope in our public schools. And something really interesting begins to happen when you see a bunch of believers from different backgrounds that are united in just the heart of the gospel. There's no competition because the gospel is never meant to be a competition. And so I always think about in this reality show age that we live in, um, that Jesus didn't send out the disciples to be fishers of men is this huge reality show. Like, well, you know what? You didn't catch enough guys today into the family. So you, you know what? You're just like out of the family. It didn't work that way. They didn't have to like go shove each other down the street to go share the gospel with somebody and something crazy. But if we aren't careful as Christ followers, when we take what was so good in God's heart to go make disciples and we make it about just our church or saying how many people we personally have led to the Lord, if we're not careful, what ends up happening is what was meant for good in God's truth resembles close to truth. And it gets twisted just a little bit that before we know it, we've made it all about us and about what we do, what our church does, and not how thankful we are for the church down the street and the things that they do. So there's a little verse, um, and it's, you gotta use humor sometimes and laugh at ourselves of how crazy we can be, and um, because we can be crazy sometimes. So in Ephesians um, chapter two, uh, verse 15, the end of that verse, he says, he made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating himself one new people from two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. And our hostility towards each other was put to death. I don't know what your city looks like. Maybe there's some hostility from a church on one block and a church down on the other block. Here's the deal. We can't sit inside of our churches and pray for God's kingdom to come to our city. For us to have unity of heart and then sit and pray and do nothing to reach across literally the street to connect with our brother or sister in the Lord across the street. What does it say to the unbelievers of our city? If they're sitting in a coffee shop and they hear you as a believer talking about the church down the street and not in an encouraging way. It has to start with us. If we want to see our city come to know Jesus, we have to humble ourselves and to be so thankful that we're part of one big body. And so the next verse, it says, he brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who are far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. This is what I look at when I see unity in a city. I see it like a family and a family reunion. What happens at a family reunion? All the small families, that do life together, get together, to get to see everybody and to catch up and to see how life is going. And you have one purpose of celebrating the family that you all belong to. That's what unity should look like in a city to reach your city for Christ. Don't make it a competition. Be each other's biggest cheerleaders because something powerful happens that the enemy cannot get a foothold in your city. When believers come together and pray together, they worship together and they come with humility. So we just want to encourage you. It starts with your heart and it starts with you.